Good evening. We begin the news at 10 with the earthquake today that shook you and the rest of the gem state. The 6.5 magnitude quake rattled Idaho oh and the God. rest of the Pacific oh Northwest just before six o'clock mountain time, and it lasted nearly 10 seconds. The longest 10 seconds I've had in a while. The US Geological Survey says that epicenter was about 75 miles north of Meridian, just west of Chalice. Dozens of aftershocks followed, with the largest registering a 4.6 on the Richter scale, and the smallest being a 3.1. One of the places where the earthquake was felt was in Haley, Idaho. Two residents there told us they thought their house was going to come down because it got so loud. Our Joey Prechtel spoke to those two women tonight. He joins us now and Joey, how are they doing and what do they have to say? Well, Mark and Kim, they're good now. Definitely a little scared and shaking up after that earthquake earlier. They told me they were just sitting in their house, just talking amongst themselves when everything started to just shake. Chelsea and Lorraine Goodrich were sitting at their home in Haley, taking part in self-isolating when everything started to just shake. I just told Chelsea, I said, we need to get out of this house because it sounds like it's coming down on us. They ran outside to get out of the house since they live in a log cabin. Then once it stopped, they went inside to look at the damage. In the house, my mom's travertine floors are cracked. They already had some like small cracks, Ooh. but now there's huge ones, just like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, so we're just like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy. The earthquake was felt throughout the Treasure Valley, with many of you sending us videos of your home shaking. The earthquake had a magnitude of 6.5 and the epicenter was more than 70 miles north of Meridian near Chalice. As for the Goodriches, their house is still standing, but they're not sure of how stable it is. Yeah, there's some there's some new cracks in the wall. I think that there's stuff going on with the foundation. I'm definitely going to have somebody come out and walk around and make sure it's structurally sound. Meanwhile, they're happy the earthquake didn't cause more damage. I feel really grateful that things weren't worse, that we nothing did, you know, crush us or come in because it really sounded like it was going to. And we still have homes so we can self-isolate. And stay safe, Idaho. <laughs> yeah, stay, stay safe. home, stay safe. Don't get too shook up. Now, Chelsea texted me a little more than an hour ago, letting me know that their house is still creaking, which is making both her and her mom a little bit nervous. So they told me that they're actually sleeping in the RV tonight just to be safe. Mark and Kim. Yeah, that's probably smart. They are saying that these tremblers, these aftershocks could last for another week. All right, Joey, thanks. Uh, and this multiple gas leaks in Ada County reported shortly after the quake. Police dispatch said the first one was called in at about 630 tonight on West Casa Grande Court in Boise. Moments later, another leak reported on North 8th. Both callers said they smelled a strong gas odor. No sign of any damage. Four other gas leaks were reported within the hour in Meridian, Eagle and Boise. And while school is canceled due to the coronavirus, the Boise School District says it will be checking its buildings tomorrow to see if there's any structural damage. We are right now trying to find out if any other districts will be doing the same. And reports of minor damage around the region included old homes in Boise's north end. This chimney, for example, on the house next to St. John's Cathedral off of Hayes saw some uh, of the decades and decades old red brick toppled to the ground. We received a report of a chimney on a ranch in Featherville, also damaged. Again, only minor damage has been reported, and thankfully, no reports of any injuries. A seismologist with Boise State says scientists don't expect a lot of big earthquakes to happen in this area, and if they do, they don't expect them to be bigger than a 7.0 magnitude. Today's was awfully close to 7.0. It was the largest earthquake in the state since 1983. The 6.5 magnitude earthquake Tuesday afternoon was enough to shake overhead lights in Boise, but rattle our nerves even more. In Boise, we don't feel earthquakes very often. Um, the most recent one that people might have felt was, uh, I can't recall if it was 2007 or 2009 in northern Nevada. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that, the Bohr earthquake in 1983. Um, so we don't actually feel a lot of big earthquakes in this area, although... 
uh, they are known to happen here. Dylan Mikasell is a seismologist at Boise State University. And in terms of the magnitude, uh, this is sort of on the larger side of what we expect to see in this area. With Boise 72 miles away from the epicenter, Peter Isaacson with the University of Idaho estimates those of us in the Treasure Valley likely felt a 5.0 magnitude or maybe a little higher as there was no significant damage. He says a 6.0 magnitude in Boise would have toppled shelves. Two weeks ago, a 5.7 earthquake shook Salt Lake City, with aftershocks felt just last week. But seismologists can't say for sure if the two are connected. It is definitely a separate fault, but that doesn't mean that stress on the Wasatch Fault down in Salt Lake couldn't have been transferred up here. That's a big jump to say that those two are necessarily uh, related right now. As to what might happen in the coming days? For an earthquake of this size, we can expect to feel some aftershocks for the next week, and then they should taper off. Uh, probably similar to what Salt Lake is experiencing in terms of aftershocks, a very small chance that there's a bigger earthquake and uh, a very high likelihood over the next few days that we feel a couple smaller aftershocks. The U.S. Geological Survey says there is a 4% chance of one or more aftershocks shocks larger than magnitude 6.5. Now, the location of today's quake for anyone who was around here back in 1983, well, it brought back thoughts of the Bora quake that, like this one, also hit the Chalice area. It was October 28th. The magnitude 6.9 was the most violent quake in the lower 48 in over two decades at the time. Two children walking to school that morning in Chalice were killed by a crumpling building. Three weeks later, President Reagan declared the earthquake a major disaster. Many around the viewing area felt the Wells, Nevada quake of 2008, a magnitude 6.0, the largest in Nevada at that time in 30 years. Bricks thrown from some 20 buildings, one abandoned two-story building collapsed. The rebuilding of Wells took years. Back in 1916, a quake hit the city of Boise. It wrecked several chimneys downtown. The effects could be felt for 100 miles all over the region. But again, as you just heard the scientist Kim talk to today, they are saying these events are so rare, happening only every 20 to 30 years. But as you felt, it did happen today. All right, our meteorologist Rick Lance is at home tonight. And Rick, you were helping us track this earthquake earlier tonight. So give us the latest from your perspective. Well, first, just to let you know that, of course, it was basically just right in the heart of Idaho. I'm going to start out and I'm going to show you just uh, some information here about magnitude scales as we talk about this one being above a six. That's fairly major as far as an earthquake is concerned. And what that means is that we could be looking at uh, some damage that could be around the area. And what's fortunate about it was that the center of this wasn't near a really large area or a city, because if that were to take place, then that could make things pretty difficult. And as you can see, the yellow area there in the center, that happens to be the 6.1 to 6.9 major damage possible if it's in a major area, but this one was not. Now, just to show you the earthquake at a 6.5 magnitude, if you look at the center of your screen, you can see it right in the location between Cascade and actually just northwest of Stanley. I've got some arrows that are going to come up here and just show you it's 44 miles from Cascade and that it's 45 miles from Chalice, so right in the middle. But this is the interesting part about this. Look at the number of aftershocks. The big yellow is the earthquake shortly before 6 o'clock that rocked us all. And then the yellow spots are indicating some of the aftershocks to Clayton, also through some of the uh, Central Mountain locations. And then the yellows were ones that happened just a few hours ago. The two reds are ones that happened just maybe within the last hour. So I'm counting one major earthquake at about 13 aftershocks at this particular point, and they actually continued through this evening. This map shows you that the center of that, that epicenter, that is, was about 80 miles from Boise. Uh, we were talking about a little less than 80 miles from sections of Meridian. So that kind of brings you up to date of that earthquake and uh, why it shook so, so many people, as it was pretty close to Boise, actually, you guys.
Yeah, too close for comfort, I would say, Rick. That earthquake and its aftermath were felt across much of Idaho and the greater Northwest. We have the latest information posted for you right now at KTVB.com. Just text this number and we'll provide you a link to all of our coverage. And if you have them, you can also text us pictures, maybe videos that we can feature on air of what you experienced earlier tonight.